Hey, Bo, is adaptability fatigue a thing? Well, it's, it's, a really, it's a really good question. And for someone who has spent the last 20, 30 years thinking about the neuroscience, and not just the neuroscience, but complex systems, complex adaptive systems in general, I think actually it is a real thing. Adapting fatigue or adaptable fatigue is real. So where does it come from? I think it comes from a number of places. The first one it comes from is that for many of us, when the world changes, we try to stand still. We try to maintain our current location rather than change with the world. I'll use a metaphor so just you can get that sense of embodying what that would be like in terms of energy. The metaphor is surfing. So imagine that you're, um, you're on the sea on a paddleboard, say, and you're right near the surf there, and the waves are coming in, and you're trying to stand still in those waves, and you're just trying to maintain balance and not fall. I mean, that would be exhausting after a period of time, right? Uh, and because you're fighting the change that's happening all around you. Now, now imagine even if you close your eyes, it's even, even more difficult, right? But you can probably feel it in your body how hard that would be and exhausting that would be, as opposed to surfing with the wave. Okay? When you surf with the wave, suddenly that change, the energy required with that change goes down. So the first point is, when you try to stand still with change, uh, it can be very exhausting, rather than move with the change. The second point is, even when you move with the change, to see different, especially if you're trying to see differently, if you're trying to learn and adapt in a positive way, um, that can actually uh, also create fatigue. Why? Because when you try to think or see differently, you are actually growing brain cells. The brain cells that you already have are arborizing. arborizing. Your brain is like a muscle. You use, you use it or you lose it because the brain, your brain evolved to match the complexity of this world, a less complex world, a less complex brain, a more complex world, a more complex brain. Why? Because 20% of the energy you consume goes to 2% of your body mass, right? Thinking is really expensive, which is, you know, why so few people do it. When you have two grandmaster chess players playing, uh, they will be burning hundreds and hundreds of calories by simply sitting there and thinking. So when we engage our brain in this way, it can be very tiring because you are literally using energy and growing brain tissue. But the consequences, the ramifications are essential that you do this. Uh, but how can we help minimize the fatigue of that adapting in a positive way? Well, the reality is that your brain does adapt. Your brain will always adapt. If it, the world changes, your brain will change. It can't help but do so. You've evolved to evolve. You're adapted to adapt. The question is not whether or not you change or adapt. The question is whether or not you have agency in that. Usually, so often, we are passive. We are reactive rather than being proactive. So when you become proactive in that change, you will actually feel the energy requirements go down because you're now engaged in a far more positive activity. You're taking agency. When we have agency, our, um, our sense of energy increases. Finally, another way to help deal with adaptable change, there are two more ways, is we need a sandbar. When you're surfing, you eventually, even if it's fun, even if you're being proactive, even if you're growing brain tissue, you need a place to rest. You need a sandbar, right? And I think one of the most fundamental sandbars is love. Love is um, that place that enables you to take risks, enables you to recover from treading water, from the surfing, uh, whether you're trying to stand still or move with it. So we all need a sandbar. We all need a certainty from which to step into uncertainty. Even that, even that sandbar needs to at some point be questioned, but we don't have to question everything all the time. So maintain that sandbar or discover it, create it. And the most fundamental is love, whether it be for another person, for an animal, um, for nature. Find that love that is that sandbar. And the final one is when you're adapting, especially if you're proactive, you've got that sandbar to come back to, you go back out, you swim or you surf. Think about what it is that you've come to understand that you didn't understand before. Not know, but come to understand. 
Why? Because when you understand something, your brain has complexified. And in that moment, you, your, your body will get an intrinsic reward. Because during evolution, they said, that's a really good idea. Right? When you understand something, it means you can change, you can respond to future uncertainties. So you'll get that intrinsic reward, you'll get those, that endorphin release, at least for a moment in time when you come to that closure, when you come to that understanding. So give yourself periodic closure from understanding. And in some sense, that itself can act as a sandbar. So yes, adaptability fatigue is real, especially when we try not to move, when we resist the change. But even when we go with the change, if we're proactive, we will help diminish the fatigue that results and find that sandbar, that love that enables you to rest, to en that empowers you to then uh, be proactive in your change and then discover what it is that you understand now that you didn't understand before. Find closure periodically in that time of uncertainty.